I'm all for Christmas. All the happy smiles and the wishes. And I want it all from the light. Hi everyone, welcome back to Bethany's Vintage Fairy Tale. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so excited to be sharing with you guys this banister DIY. This is going to be a garland we're creating on my staircase when you first enter my house. I'm so excited to share with you guys the entire process. So I'm starting out with my base garland. Believe it or not, these are actually garlands that I got from the dollar store. They're Dollarama garlands here in Canada. They're $4 each and I'm going ahead and just adding those directly onto the top of my banister using that same Amazon wire that I've been using in all of my videos and I decided this year I wanted to place the garland directly on top of the banister there's a lot of different ways that you can go ahead and apply your garlands you can do it straight on the top like I'm doing here you can swoop it down and kind of have it in scallops or you can kind of do a mix of each put some on the top and then scallop it as well there's lots of different options but this year I wanted to kind of uh, do something different so I'm going ahead and just putting that directly on top and you'll kind of see this garland is very sparse I haven't gone ahead and fluffed it yet and since it was a dollar store garland it was quite thin to begin with so what I'm going to be doing is layering actually garlands on top of each other so I used I believe three of these garlands and I'm just going ahead and layering one on top of the other and then I'm using the bristles kind of crossing them over themselves to kind of join the two garlands together that way there's no weird spaces in between or gaps or anything like that you can kind of see how they're all separate right now but once you go ahead and kind of wind the branches together it makes it look really full and you can't even tell that these were separate garlands I knew. My plan in a few years is definitely to invest in some high-end greenery, but that can cost a lot of money and it can get really expensive buying greenery. I find the florals and sprays and Christmas greenery is like where most of my budget goes every year. It's always super expensive, so this is a great alternative if you guys are on a budget. This is a dollar store garland, but it really looks high-end once you go ahead and add those in together and once you give it a really good fluff, you can't even tell that this was actually from the dollar store. So I just love how this was done on a total budget. And again, this is the base of the garland here, so it's just going to kind of act as the reinforcement for the rest of the decorations. You're not even going to see it a whole lot. It just kind of gives the uh, garland a really nice depth. So now we're going to go ahead and add in our lights. So this is a large box of lights that I picked up at Walmart this year. This is the same set of lights that I used on my Christmas tree, so everything will kind of match nicely. And they're a nice warm uh, light. I don't like a cool light. I don't think it looks good with my Christmas decorations, so I made sure to grab a warm light and I'm just going ahead and weaving those in and around the garland. I'm not using any additional wires or anything like that. I'm just using the garland itself to hold it in place, which makes it really fast and easy to add them in. And then just kind of go ahead and make sure that you have them evenly spaced out. If you have any kind of clumps or anything, this is a really nice, easy um, light to work with. You can just kind of pull it apart and move it around to make sure that you get the look that you're going for. And the wishes. And I want it all from the lights to the mistletoe Tell me one thing Is there anything that you're missing? So now you can see how all of the lights are looking. I'm so excited how it's turning out so far. And with this kind of tutorial, guys, you can really customize this to whatever kind of uh, decor style that you guys are going for. If you like a really simplistic look, you can kind of scale back on the steps that I'm doing and just kind of um, use those as inspiration, or you can go full on glam like I'm gonna be doing here with all of the different textures. It's totally a personal preference, and hopefully I can give you guys some good decorating ideas. So I wanted to use that same technique that we did with my Christmas tree. I'm using a grapevine wreath and going ahead and kind of deconstructing it and using it to add in some layering into my garland here. I really like this very whimsical rustic touch that it gives and it's super affordable. I got these grapevine wreaths at Walmart for five bucks and then once you go ahead and deconstruct it, there's so much material to work with. So I really find it's a great, easy, affordable way to get a really nice kind of rustic texture into your garland. And and again, you can add as much or as little of this as you want. You can cut these strands shorter if you don't want them quite as exaggerated as I have them here. Again, it's kind of a personal taste preference on how you want to style it, but I really like how this just gives us something pop of something different, and it really also helps to keep it cohesive with the tree that's just at the top of the stairs. If you guys haven't seen that tutorial, I shared a classic tree design with lots of emerald greens and uh, some ruby reds, and this is kind of a companion piece almost to kind of go with that. So I'm kind of keeping the same kind of theme here. 
And now we're going to go ahead and add in all of our greenery. I get most of my greenery from either uh, HomeSense Canada or Home Goods if you're in the States, Hobby Lobby, and Michaels. Those are my kind of three favorite places to get greenery because I find I can usually get some sort of a deal or get them in a bundle to save a little bit of money. And I really like these ones here because they were really full. And once I went ahead and fluffed them out, it gave a lot of different texture and dimension. And I love how they're kind of that fluffy kind of gush cashmere greenery. I think it adds so much to the garlic and it also makes it kind of appear a lot more high-end than the garland actually was so I kind of like mixing those high-end pieces with those low-end pieces it kind of helps your budget a little bit and you can't even tell when you go ahead and mix them together like what was more expensive or what was cheaper I find that it just works really well together And then to secure all of my greenery in place, I'm using the bristles of the garland to hold it in place. You don't need any additional wire. Everything is made already out of wire itself, so it makes it really easy to kind of stick those into the greenery and hold it in place. You don't need any extra supplies, and I find that it works really well to do it this way. And then you don't have any extra like um, pipe cleaners or wire sticking out or anything like that. This helps it just to look a little bit more put together, and I just love how the different textures are looking. I've kind of going for the same kind of feeling as my classic tree with not really flocked pieces they're more iced so they're very lightly snowed nothing too heavy and I really wanted the greenery to be kind of the focal piece here and then these more fluffy greenery these are actually another dollar store find if you wouldn't believe it I got them at Dollarama Canada here and I'm just going ahead and fluffing them out I love the little bit of icy texture that they have and they were really full so it really helped to kind of cover up some of that cheaper greenery that was underneath and I really like the kind of darker green it added I was kind of hoping for a little bit of an emerald green and that kind of helped to bring in a little bit more of a different kind of color to the greenery and I'm just going ahead and kind of placing these in and around the garland wherever it looks like there's kind of a like a gap or if they're if the garland underneath is a little bit too sparse I'm kind of using that as my guide of where to add in these bigger greenery pieces. So now that all of our larger greenery is placed, I'm going in with these smaller stems. Um, this was actually a large bush that I got from Michaels and I went ahead and cut it up into individual stems. That way I got a lot more bang for my buck that way and I could kind of place these in and around the garland as I wished. The bush was so big that it would have looked really tacky to kind of put that in the garland by itself. It would have been way too big. So I find that cutting it up and adding those in little places here and there just kind of helped to spread it out a little bit and again you get way more for your money's worth that way that if you were to buy just like 10 of this giant bush and put them all over it would be way too expensive so I really like doing this kind of technique and just kind of adding them in and around the garland just to add more texture and depth and dimension and I really like how all of the greenery is in the similar color family but they have different tones which really helps to kind of give that visual impact that I'm looking for when I'm creating my garland and it kind of makes it look a little bit more realistic because in real life greenery is all different shades of green all different textures and colors so I like making Mixing it together just to give it a really nice organic feel and I love how all of these colors are kind of working in with this color scheme. All the happy smiles and the so now I'm going to go ahead and add in a few more greenery stems. These ones are a little bit more heavily snowed, but I kind of like how it gave, again, another different texture. And I only had four or five of these, so I went ahead and made sure they were very spaced out. That way the whole garland looked very cohesive. And again, I'm really focusing on greenery in this garland, so I wanted a lot of different texture and colors just to kind of celebrate that kind of organic greenery. Just kind of placing those in and around the garland. And again same thing you're kind of looking for those gaps or those holes where it looks a little bit sparse and then I'm just kind of going ahead and moving the individual stems just to give it a little bit more of a fuller look the love I live, the dream I know, this Christmas I only want to be close to 
So now we're going to go ahead and add in our ribbon. So this is the same ribbon that we used on that classic tree design. Again, I want it to be very cohesive so that since they're right beside each other, they would match, but not be too matchy-matchy, if that makes sense. They would coordinate and be a pair, but not exactly the same. So what I'm doing here is I'm going ahead and cutting strips in my ribbon. I kind of measured out the length of my arm and then just cut those accordingly. And I used what was ever on that roll. So here you can see all of the different strips. I've shared a few different ribbon techniques on my channel. We've decorated lots of different trees and garlands so far, so make sure you guys check out my other videos if you want more ribbon inspiration for your trees and your garlands this year. But for this particular design, I wanted to do something a little bit different. So what I'm doing is I'm just pinching it in the middle, and then I'm adding that directly into the garland. The same thing, not using any additional wires, I'm just using the garland itself by crossing over the branches to hold it in place. And then instead of making a bow or cutting a dovetail, I wanted to kind of roll the ribbon into make it kind of look like a scroll, if that makes sense. With my tree design, I went for kind of a regal flare, so I kind of wanted to mimic that same feeling with kind of making these really pretty kind of scrolls with my ribbon. So I just went ahead and rolled the ribbon up and then just kind of pulled the tails out a little bit so you could still see the ends. And with this kind of technique, you could make this very exaggerated and just make the tails very, very long, or you can do shorter ones depending on what kind of style that you like. But I'm going ahead and just kind of adding those in and around the garland. This gives a really nice different color color combination and texture and this ribbon is a little bit sparkly so it really picks up the light very well and I really like the lighter tone since we have a lot of green going on I wanted to kind of contrast that with a little bit of a lighter touch and I'm just going ahead the same thing pinching it in the center and then rolling the ends just to get that beautiful scrolled effect. Well I'm all for Christmas all the happy smiles and the wishes and I want it all from the lights to the mistletoe tell me one thing is there anything that you're missing I will keep you warm as soon as you remove that snow Whatever we do, we will be all right. These holiday wonders will open your mind. May all your wishes tonight come true. The love I live, the dream I knew, this Christmas. So now that we have our larger ribbon placed, we're going to go ahead and add in our second ribbon. So this is a little bit of a, th a thinner ribbon and it's also a beautiful velvet dark green color and I just really love this shade. It kind of went with my emerald theme that I was doing. So I'm doing the same technique. I'm just cutting uh, strips. You can kind of gauge how long you want them depending on how exaggerated you want your tails to be. I'm pinching it in the center and then attaching it directly to the garland. Again, using the branches to cross over on themselves to hold it in place and then I'm rolling the edges just to kind of get that curled scroll effect and we're going to do the same technique all over the garland I found with this ribbon the emerald green was from Hobby Lobby and I got way more on my roll than I did with the Michaels scrolly ribbon so that is just kind of a heads up there I do find that quite a bit that Hobby Lobby has way more on their rolls than the Michaels does I don't know if that's just me but <laughs> I've just been kind of finding that so I did have a lot more of the green um, to play with so I'm just going ahead and adding quite a bit of of this I'm going kind of in and around on both sides of the garland just to kind of build up the garland a little bit more and since this is a solid it doesn't take away from the garland so you can go ahead and add as much of this as you want nimbly, did you hear something from the chimney I will keep you warm as soon as you remove that snow
So now we're going to go ahead with our next step, which is going to be our floral layer. I wanted to continue on this emerald green and ruby red theme. So I have these beautiful poinsettias that I picked up at Hobby Lobby this year. They're the same ones that we place on our tree, so they'll co be nice and cohesive. And I'm just going ahead and adding those in. I only had four of these, and since they were quite large, I wanted to make sure that they were evenly spaced out throughout the, uh, the garland here. And I just went ahead and inserted those directly into the garland and used the branches to hold it in place. And I just love how this ruby red really contrasted the green and it just gave it that really kind of classic elegant look that I just absolutely love about Christmas. We're going to go ahead with our second floral. These are the same kind of icy roses that we used in our tree again and I'm going ahead and placing those in and around the garland. These ones were quite a looser stem so it kind of pulled out the roses in and around the garland just to give it a little bit more fullness and kind of pull those in and around where the vines are just to make sure that it looked a little bit more natural just kind of how it would be if the vines and the roses were kind of growing together. And again, I placed those in the, where the gaps were. I just wanted to make sure that the red was nice and spaced out. These are the only two florals that we're going to be using on here. I wanted to keep it relatively simple and just have a lot of the greenery and the grapevine wreath kind of showing. It's a magical time full of kisses. Take a walk outside and tickle a snowman's nose. Now we're going to go ahead with our different stem. These are some berries that I picked up from Michaels this year. I wanted to continue on with my theme. My colors were mainly the red and green, but I also wanted to feature this champagne kind of gold color just as an accent piece. And I really like these berries because they're all made of wire and they're so easy to kind of bend and give it a really nice full whimsical touch. So again, I'm just placing those in and around the garland anywhere that there's no already floral existing. I'm just adding those in and around the green greenery and using that to hold it in place and just kind of pulling them in around the ribbons. Don't be afraid to kind of move things around. As you start placing more of your product, things will kind of change and move around a bit. So you can always adjust your grapevine wreath or your ribbon, your greenery, the berries, whatever you're placing just to kind of fit better together. Don't be afraid to kind of move things around if things kind of get um, messed up a little bit as you're adding some more stuff in. That's kind of the fun of it. You kind of change it up and keep playing and moving things around. I never get it right the first time so don't be afraid to try this at home okay guys <laughs> so i hope you guys are loving it so far i'm so excited how it's turning out i'm just loving all of these colors together it's so nice to incorporate the traditional colors if you guys have seen my other videos i do love the kind of very romantic girly vibes but of course classic christmas is always near and dear to my heart because this is something that i grew up with so i hope you guys are enjoying it so far so now we're going to go ahead and add in some red berries. These have a little bit of frost on them, so it really helps to pick out that greenery that we use that had the kind of icy stems to it. I like how they kind of coordinate together, but it's not a heavily flocked look. It's more of an icy look. And I'm adding those in wherever there's not a little bit of red from the florals, just kind of putting those in and around the existing greenery. Our final touch, I mean, this wouldn't be Bethany's Vintage Fairy Tale without some cute little characters. So I wanted to add in these elves that I picked up this year. My whole inspiration for this garland was kind of almost like a slide. So I wanted the elves to be kind of whimsically kind of falling down the banister, kind of like they're sliding down almost. I thought that would be so fun and cute. So I went ahead and added these in with just with some floral wire, adding them directly to the banister itself just to hold them in place. And the great thing 
thing about these is they're all made of wire so I can kind of move their arms and their feet around just to kind of give them the illusion that they're kind of sliding down my garland here. Again, this is totally a personal touch. I like this kind of whimsical design, so I wanted to add these in, but of course you could leave it just classic with the greenery and the roses if you wanted to do that. But again, this is just something that I love to do, so I went ahead and added these in. I had four of these elves, so I spaced them out nice and evenly, and it just kind of kicked their legs up to so it looked like they were sliding down the banister, and I just thought it was such a fun, cute little design. For our final step, we're going to be adding in this beaded garland. I kind of wanted it to look like the elves were stringing this along the garland. All from the lights to the I looped the garland around their hands just to kind of make it look like they were holding it and then I looped them around the garland just to kind of make this really beautiful swagged, almost scalloped effect and have this going all the way down the banister. Whatever we do, we will be all right. These holiday wonders will open your mind. May all your wishes tonight come true. The love I live. Now that we have our first layer, I wanted to do a second piece just to kind of uh, loop it over on itself and just give it a little bit more of a dramatic effect. So I did the same thing and looped it around the elf's hand and went ahead and kind of scalloped it all the way down the banister, just using the pieces of the garland to hold it in place. And I just love how we gave that finishing touch and again, more of a whimsical feel since the elves are holding it and they're kind of decorating my banister for me. If you guys saw my whimsical tree design, which I posted um, quite a bit earlier on in this season I did something similar when the elves were hanging from the ceiling and they had a garland wrapped around the tree so I kind of wanted to mimic that idea here but they're totally different color schemes so I like how you can kind of contrast these with different decor ideas. And then for our final step, we're going to go ahead and add in these ornament clusters. If you guys saw my classic tree design that I just posted, I showed you guys how to make these. It's the easiest DIY in the world. You just take some wire and then you string up all of the ornaments and then just wire it together. And then I'm just adding these directly into the garland. It gives such a nice punch of color and it's the easiest way to add in ornaments into your designs. It's super easy because they're all together. And then you just go in and around the garland looking wherever it kind of needs a little bit more sparkle and shine, a little bit more color, and you just add those in. And I just think it gives such a nice texture. And I also incorporated a little bit of that chocolate brown, which we had kind of with the grapevine wreath there. So I wanted to incorporate a little bit more of that earthy tone. And then of course we have the emerald green and the ruby red, and then the champagne gold to match the elves and then our berries. So I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. This was so much fun to put together. I hope I've inspired you guys to create something beautiful in your home. And if you guys don't have a staircase or a banister like this, you can also take these ideas and just incorporate it into a garland for a different area of your home. The best thing about this is it's just a garland. So you could use this in so many different areas in your home if you don't have a staircase. I hope that I've given you guys some ideas on how to decorate for Christmas. I'm so excited to share with you guys my passion for decorating and design. I have so much fun doing this for you guys. I'm so grateful that you guys have tuned in to watch my video. If you guys are new, I would absolutely love if you would subscribe to my channel for more weekly inspirational videos, everything to do with heart, family, and home, decorating, DIYs. I would love to have you part of Bethany's Vintage Fairy Tale. So thank you guys for being here. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you guys in my next video. Take care. Bye. Keep you warm as soon as you that snow whatever we do we will be all right these holiday wonders will open your mind may all your wishes tonight come true the love i live the dream i knew
Christmas 